Welcome to Conversations on the Coop. I'm your host, Trinity Director of Athletics, Drew Galbraith. It's my pleasure to be joined today by two Trinity student athletes uh, in this conversation. Uh, we've got Betsy Winslow from the women's hockey team and John Campanosi from the men's hockey team. Uh, always, always give the harder name second, just in case it doesn't go quite right. Well, welcome to both of you, and uh, we're going to spend some time later on talking about Radical Health, which is a new peer-to-peer uh, -peer mentoring program that we're doing within Trinity Athletics. But first, let's talk a little bit about each, each of your path uh, here into college hockey and playing hockey at Trinity. So, uh, Betsy, I'll start with you. You've got a little bit closer road to Trinity uh, growing up in Connecticut, and then uh, went to prep school just down the road here. Yeah, um, so... I played um, boys hockey growing up um, all the way until checking started in Bantams and that's when I moved to a club program called Fairfield, which was like one of the um, more competitive girls hockey programs for college and prep school exposure. From there I ended up going to Westminster School um, in Simsbury which is 20 minutes away. Um, I had an awesome experience there and um, also for club hockey, um, I played a lot of games here at um, our rink here. That's what I was going to ask. So Westminster, there's a lot of Trinity connections, uh, right. uh, coaches there, the athletic director, um, but also Mid Fairfield, you know, plays a lot of times at, at our rink. So mm -hmm. when, when was the first time that Trinity uh, came to mind? Yeah, I'd say my first exposure at Trinity was probably when I was about 12 years old. Um, that was like the first time I played at the rink. Um, kind of driving around the area, like seeing what this kind of school's about, um, not that college was really in mind at that point. Um, and then I'd say as high school began and the college process really started getting, becoming more of a conversation um, later, um, both of my coaches are both Trinity Women's Ice Hockey alum, um, Jess Keough and Kelsey Finn. Kelsey Finn also played field hockey here and then also the athletic director um, Tim Jonkis also went to Westminster. There's also a lot more um, faculty members at Westminster that went to Trinity so there's definitely a lot of connections um, between Westminster and Trinity and I was able to have a lot of insight and So yeah. w when, when did you really think like ice hockey was for you? I know you had an older brother uh, right. who, who played the game, you've got a twin sister as well, and right. how much of that was an influence of just, this is what our family does, or yeah. this is where I found my passion? Um, so, right, my older brother, he's about five old years older than me, um, he started playing at a young age, um, there was no really ice hockey in my family before that, both of my parents swam in college, um, so I think I was kind of just at the age when I was about four or five years old where I wanted to do everything my older brother did. Um, and so when I was about four, I think was the first time I started skating with my sister. Um, and I fell in love with it so quickly. Hockey eventually um, became like wrapped up in our family. Um, we used to build an ice rink every winter in our backyard. Um, we went to Rangers games as we're really close to New York City. Um, but yeah, I guess I just started getting more competitive and serious about it, and I couldn't stay away. I always wanted to be at the rink. I always wanted to be with my teammates. Um, I loved it. Now, did your, your twin sister go to Westie as well? Yes. Um, so she came to Westminster with me. Um, at the time, ice hockey was actually her main sport. Um, it was both of our main sports, um, but your freshman year at Westminster, you have to play three sports, um, so we played field hockey, ice hockey, and lacrosse. We actually did that all four years, um, and then she got really serious with field hockey and fell in love with it. I loved it too. Um, I think for me it was kind of more of like a fun activity. Most of the field hockey team was also the entire ice hockey team, um, so it was kind of another like fun side sport where like I could really like dial in and focus on ice hockey. And yeah, she just got really serious about field hockey. And when the college process began, she was like, "I want to play field hockey in college." So she now, now she's at Colby. yeah, she now plays at Colby. So John, uh, somewhat similar, uh, older brother influencing you in yep. the sport. Talk a little bit about your introduction to the game. Yeah, so uh, my father played ice hockey growing up. Same with my uncle, his brother. Um, also, like you just said, my older brother also played ice hockey. Um, I was terrified of the game at first. I never wanted to play hockey. I was always scared of the skates and the physicality. Um, so it took a lot of convincing from my parents and also some other family friends that really kind of shoved me into the game and uh, 
So I started playing around when I was seven years old uh, in Wayne, New Jersey at the Ice Fall, and I've been lucky enough to play there ever since. Um, grew up, played from seven years old all the way until I was 20 years old at the same rink, um, just convenient for my family, obviously, uh, as it's close to my house. Uh, but yeah, I think the biggest influence was, was mostly my brother and, and probably my father as well. Like I said, I played other sports growing up, and uh, I think hockey was like really the one that, that kind of was like, you know, I want to do this going forward. And they really had a passion for it. You have kind of a, a unique path with um, uh, not only getting to go to a, a, a great high school in Don Bosco Prep, very well known for its sports teams in, uh, in New Jersey and throughout the Mid-Atlantic region, but also getting to play junior hockey in your hometown. Right. So you didn't, didn't have to go away. Um, just talk about that and how you know, maybe that was, a, maybe that was a, a good decision for you just getting to, to enjoy the comforts of home yeah, playing junior hockey. Absolutely. So I like I, I keep saying, you know, I was very grateful and, and I'm sure my parents were too that I was able to um, grow up and, and play at the same rank my whole life. That was uh, something that I thought was really important. I loved it there. Um, and the convenience factor. Like it's like I said, it's five minutes down the road. Um, so being able to play, you know, from the time I, I stepped foot on the ice until juniors was uh, was really important for me and, and uh, it was nice living at home. I'm, I'm, I always say it, I'm, I'm a home person. I like being around the home. Uh, I like my home cooked meals a lot. Um, and, you know, everyone has different paths. You know, in junior hockey, it's very normal to go live with another family across the country. Um, and I can never really picture myself doing that. So, like I said, once again, I, I was very grateful to be able to just live at home those, those few years during junior hockey and uh, made some good friends during the time, too. So, so Betsy, you had this exposure to Trinity uh, probably early on, probably... I'm sure your your brother was probably looking at colleges too, and so mm -hmm. that was those are conversations in your family. Right. So when did you kind of decide Trinity was for you? Right. Um, so I'd say my junior year, um, I kind of definitely knew I was looking NESCAX. Um, Trinity was actually the I think I did like Zoom visits um, mm -hmm. at other schools, but Trinity was actually the only school that I was able to physically come to campus. Um, uh, our coach Keith was able to give me a tour um, and I just fell in love instantly. Um, I just think Trinity checked off all the boxes I needed academically, socially, and athletically. Um, I just thought it was a place like I could grow and thrive and I loved every second of being here. And what about you John? It's obviously a little bit different going through the junior hockey process. Mm -hmm. you, you finish high school, you know you're going to play at least a year or two of junior hockey. When did it come into play for you? Um, yeah, so my, my path to Trinity was uh, a little bit, you know, I guess different and kind of out of the normal for most people. Um, I said before, I, I never like took an official visit here. Uh, I've never seen the campus. I only kind of relied on like word of mouth from uh, some really good friends of mine that I played junior hockey with in New Jersey um, and some upperclassmen too that were uh, seniors when I was a freshman here that I knew from home. Um, so I heard a bunch of good things from them. and. Uh, finally got put into contact with Coach Greason, and um, it, it all happened very quickly. I was a very late like applicant um, and an accepted student, so it all kind of it was kind of a whirlwind. Um, but that process was obviously, I think, like I said, a little out of the norm for for most college uh, students. But you know, I couldn't be happier to be here now. It really is a you know, men's college hockey has this kind of unique place where. Um, at the highest levels in Division One, students commit super early, and there are lists that everybody knows who's committed where, and then things just kind of shake out very, very late in, uh, you know, at the high academic schools in Division One and, and Division Three is really selective. And so, how did were you stressed out in that process? Did you were you did you kind of convinced that something was going to work out? Oh yeah, I was beyond stressed out. That was looking back on it, it was it was crazy. It was like you know so many emotions going through my mind, and obviously my parents too. Um, you know, I, I never wanted to play that third year of juniors. I was kind of set on, like, you know, let's play two years and I really want to get to school. Um, and, you know, plans change. Like you said, everything kind of happens. And um, so plans change, and I was looking for new schools. Um, I haven't really heard a lot about Trinity, like I said, other than, like, my friends being committed here or knowing a few other student athletes that were here. Um, and, yeah, so the, the emotions were pretty crazy. I did, you know, in the back of my mind always think, though, that something was going to work out. Um, I've always been, a, you know, a firm believer, you know, even though, you know, some adversity hits at, at points that, you know, it always, there's always a plan and you're always going to end up where you're supposed to be. Um, so in the back of my mind throughout that whole process, I was like, you know what, I'm going to end up somewhere great. I know it's all going to work out. I'll, I'm sure I'll land on my feet somewhere, no doubt about it. And 
you know, here I am today and I absolutely did land on my feet. So, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about this program uh, under the banner of Ra Radical Health. Uh, Radical Hope was a group that was started a few years ago and uh, something that is now being pushed out to some other college campuses is uh, this four-week mentoring program. So Betsy, um, just talk about the first time maybe you heard about it and then tell us a little bit about what it is. Yeah, um, so I'm actually a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Um, we meet every two weeks, and uh, I think it was last spring, um, Mackenzie, I believe, um, came to talk to us about radical health. I think she had played a sport in college. I think it was a NESCAC. Um, but anyway, she kind of talked about her college experience being a student athlete. It's obviously not easy. Um, in the end of the day, it's really rewarding, but it's not easy. And um, she came and talked to us about that said that other schools had great experiences. Um, that was kind of my first exposure. I'd never heard of it before. I had heard of a lot of other um, mental health organizations um, at other universities and colleges. So I was like, if this is an opportunity, like we can't not like take it. Um, I thought it was going to be great and kind of just went from there. When the opportunity came, when um, we were asked to be peer leaders, I couldn't not accept that. Um, I think that was kind of like, for me, I was like, I need to leave this place, make leave this place better than I came. Um, and so, yeah. And so it's a four-week program uh, where we have upper-class student athletes, leading groups of first-year student athletes. What, what are we talking? And, and completely student-run. So Absolutely. And adults think, aren't in those conversations. So what's that I like? I think that's the biggest thing is that it's student-run, um, and it's all you know. It's your peers. It's it's first year student athletes that get to uh, you know, come in once a week for an hour, hour 15 minutes and, and kind of sit down and, and talk, to, uh, talk to their peers, talk to upper, upper class students here and I think that's very important. Um, you know, like we keep, we always, you know, push the, you know, it's peer run, you could come in, this is all, you know, the confidentiality is such a big part, you know, you're going to come in, speak to us, um, you know, we do a lot of good things, you know, we'll come in, maybe do an icebreaker or two. Uh, we work on active listening, and uh, I think the main thing is, you know, making sure these first-year student athletes, you know, truly feel comfortable here, um, and kind of have, you know, uh, you know, outlets with us being peer leaders and peer guides to to better themselves and better their experience here at Trinity College. Um, obviously, uh, student athletes are like a lot of students are under lots of different pressures. Um, people not only bring them with them when they they arrive on campus, but um, the additional pressure of wanting to play a sport at a high level and do well in school and have friends and, and have a social life. So, uh, you know, there's obviously a lot of people concerned about all students' mental health. Why, why is having a program like this so important, Betsy? What, what's the, like, to you, what was the thing that said, boy, I really think I can be of, of help to others? Yeah, I mean, I think right away it made me think of myself, um, my freshman year self, my freshman year. Um, I, if this was an option, I totally would have taken it. I think, um, personally, I came into college being like, I went to boarding school, I'm going to be completely fine. Um, little did I know, like, I think I had a great experience my freshman year, but there's always bumps in the road your first year. Um, you're adjusting to so many different aspects of your new chapter of your life. Um, but yeah, I just think the skills that are taught in this program can be beneficial to anyone, but especially student athletes. I think a lot of things such as like listening and time management and stress management and the way uh, your mental monologue is, like I just think all those things that like a lot of people like don't really take a second to actually think about, like can I improve those skills? And I think those also all correlate very highly to your mental health. What about you, John? Same yeah, question. Yeah, uh, piggybacking off that, I think you, you kind of touched upon it, but being a first year student at any college is tough. Just being a student. Uh, that comes with a lot of stress. And then if you want to add on top sports or social life, homework, exams, like it becomes a lot. And I think uh, as, as upperclassmen now, I think we could all look back at ourselves three, four years ago, whatever it may be. And um, a program like this, especially for me, would have been so beneficial. Um, as someone that's dealt with uh, you know, mental stresses and anxiety, I couldn't imagine having this program when I was a first year, and uh, you know I wish we did, but I'm so happy that Trinity does now, and I think it's such a good, you know important thing to talk about, you know the mental health side of things, and I think it's so important to recognize that 
you know, how much is truly on a plate of a student athlete. There's there's so much that comes with it, and I think it sometimes gets overlooked, and it's like, you know, you're expected to do this. Um, that's just normal, but, uh, you know, that could be taxing for a lot of people. So uh, with a program like this, I think it's it's really amazing that now these first years could, you know, listen to our stories, and uh, like I said, we could kind of maybe lead them in the right direction to, uh, to better themselves and better their experience here managing all the stresses that come with it. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge vulnerability that comes with being a varsity athlete in college, and um, you know, there's lots of other student groups where you're under uh, pressure to perform, but usually those those scores aren't all posted on a website as soon as it happens, where everybody knows exactly how many minutes you played, how many shifts you had, whether you had a shot, whether you let up a goal, and I think that um, that transition from usually before college, a lot of students are playing. Like you both probably played more club hockey games than you can ever think to remember, um, and so sometimes like. Those games just kind of blend together, and uh, you probably remember a couple of big wins along the way, and maybe one that got away, but not the way it is in college, where there's so much pressure on those. You know, in college hockey, it's going to be 25 or 24 game regular season, then playoffs, or some sports even uh, fewer. So, um, for both of you, what what do you think's maybe different about hockey that brings you to this point, where you say you want to help others? What are the things that you saw in the game growing up, where you feel like hockey is one of those sports that just puts students through this crucible uh, and creates some of these pressures? Either of you. Yeah, so like you said, I think hockey is is a sport that it's very mentally taxing. And like you said, we, we always hold ourselves to such high standards, uh, just like any other athlete would do, right? But in hockey, there, and like you said, you made a good point about being in college and you're only playing X amount of games, and every game is so crucial. You know, all these games matter, um, and that could be taxing because, you know, you're trying to perform at your very best week in, week out. Uh, for what happens to be one of the longest seasons in college sports. Um, so like I said, it, it's, it's very taxing, and um, I think we all can relate that we always are you know, trying to do our best and, and uh, always play our best day in and day out, and it, it, it can get to, uh, to be a certain level of law. But I think that you know, the big thing is trying to find confidence, um, and I think that with this program, you know, maybe we could help you know, these first year students that are adjusting to this kind of life to, to find that confidence, to find that motivation to be their very best selves every day that they're here. What about you, Betsy? Yeah, um, kind of going off of that, I think also looking back, um, like sure, uh, our season here, it's a really long season. We go through both semesters. Um, but I also think like if you think back to the commitment that we've all gave to the sport to get where we are now, um, all the weekends we gave up, um, the extra lifts we're putting on um, outside of practice and outside of games and it's just a really huge time commitment and I think that can translate a lot to now you are at the goal. The goal that everyone wants to reach is to play college hockey um, no matter what level it is and I think all the huge commitment that you've put towards the sport I think obviously everyone's not perfect at times so I think when things go wrong, it kind of feels like when at times when hockey's not going right, that like everything feels like it's going wrong. And I think just the, that like relationship between the commitment you've put in all these years, like why am I not playing well? Like why did I have an off practice? But I think these skills are really useful to overcome those challenges. But I think at the same time, which a lot of conversations can kind of shift to in these meetings is that like, it's okay to like not be okay. It's okay that like if you're having an off day at a practice, like I think we all, as John has said, we all hold ourselves to these like extremely high standards. And I think being aware and acknowledging and like understanding that like it's okay if you're not like if you can't be your best every single day. So uh, you've I think given a lot of great pitches to a first year student why this might be valuable, why this might be helpful. Um, what just talk a little bit about that value of it coming from upper class students as opposed to a coach. And mm -hmm. coaches give out lots of great advice and maybe 25% yeah. of it gets heard. Um, so, and, and kind of how have you found first years in being receptive to that sort of messaging from someone who's been through really this exact same experience? Yeah, so I think it's, like we said, the, the biggest, like, you know, it's a selling point, but it's it's peer to peer. These are, you know, student athletes that have sat in your exact shoes, been, you know, been through everything that you've been through most likely um, and like you said you know coaches are, are great to go to and you know seek advice from but I think when you're hearing it from a peer 
that you could truly relate to, whether you know you played on the same sporting team or you know just having another student athlete tell you what their experience was like. I think it you know in their mind they're like, okay, you know, it's not just me that's feeling this way. You know, it's one thing if a coach, you know, you know, the coach could listen and you know point you in the, in the right directions to, to maybe you know better yourself, but you know coming from someone else that that sat in, in these chairs is I think that that's very valuable um, and something that. I definitely don't, don't take for granted, you know, I'm beyond happy that this is here because it helps me too. It even helps, you know, all of us have conversations with them. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's a two-way street. We're both benefiting from uh, from this really exceptional program. And uh, Betsy, if you want to add on, please. Yeah, I mean, I think your last point, like I even, we had our um, first session last Sunday. And as I was sitting there, obviously I'm listening to all the first years, um, like answering all the questions and really engaging, but I'm like, wow, like I, like I, even though I'm a leader and I'm a mentor, like I can learn so much from this too. Um, but at the same time, what I really was going to touch on, what I think is super important, um, at least for me, I think, um, and on the women's ice hockey team, I've had some like incredible um, upperclassmen role models, um, and over the years and. The conversation of mental health has kind of been opened a little. I think there's a lot of more room for improvement. And I really just think, like, they've been in your shoes. Like, I remember um, that we had a conversation about mental health my freshman year, um, led by one of the seniors. And I just kind of remember, like, sitting there being like, wow. Like, it's just very empowering knowing someone has been in your exact shoes one place before. So, um Thank you both for all your work with, with Radical Health. Um, before we close, we've got a few weeks left before the start of hockey practice. What's one thing each of you wants to like make sure to either enjoy or do before you lock in for you know four, five, six months of hockey? Betsy, put me on the spot. <laughs> um, I guess I would say I'll take this from a, a practice outlook. Um, so we've been having senior run practices. I guess the biggest thing for me that I'll enjoy um, is like we play mini games a lot. I love mini games. Both of my coaches can test to that. Every drill, I'm always asking to play mini games. Um, so, which we do in practice, but not as much. Not as much. Not as much as I'd like. But um, yeah, I guess just like take advantage of this team bonding time before our season starts and the fun mini games. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the team bonding aspect is, is very important now. And like you said, come October 22nd, things really ramp up for us. Um, so I think right now, like even, you know, showing up to the rink four days a week and in the weight room four days a week, like just doing it with a smile on your face and being, you know, appreciative that you could at least, you know, skate and, and work out because, you know, you never know when that could be your last time doing it. So um, I think just kind of appreciating the, the little things that we kind of go through every day, uh, even outside of the hockey rink and sports, just... You know, waking up and you know going to class and doing it, you know, with a smile. Um, I think that could go a long way. So awesome. Well, yeah. best of luck to both of you this season. We'll be excited to uh, uh, see things ramp up and uh, first games in November as well. So Betsy Winslow, John Campanosi, thanks for joining us. Thanks for all your work with Radical Health and supporting fellow student athletes. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. That'll do it for this conversation of the Coop. Uh, for all the latest news, scores, and schedules, go to bantamsports.com. Follow us on social at bantamsports.